When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here's your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and Cassie Cruz. All you gotta do is sing a song. Good morning. Hello, I'm Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Cassie Cruz. Welcome to Love Conquers Alls. I'm going to introduce Doreen Rivera. Uh, She experienced a life-changing automobile accident, ending her flourishing dance career. Uh, This was in 1979. Doreen transformed her debilitating event into a life-affirming experience, which is fantastic. Doreen actually is now uh, dealing with a body full mind. Let me spell it. I love that. (laughs) B-O-D-Y-F-U-L mind. And you can find her at thebodifulmind.com, where uh, seeking the value of each life experience is a lesson, the opportunity, the gift. The gift is the source of self-empowerment that creates a ripple effect of change in every aspect of your life. She has been called the godmother of stretch. She brought her original stretch program to Jane Fonda's workout, which included the original exercise bar class, and introduced Jane Fonda and the world to the idea and importance of stretching. People began to quickly understand what Doreen was always expressing. When you move muscles, you move emotion. It's that simple. That's a quote from Doreen. Her work is an inspiration for many exercise programs, videos, and books, which paved the way to the yoga movement. She taught at UCLA. She taught with Dr. Leroy Perry's International Sports Science Institute, health editor of the original Latina magazine. Doreen has made so many contributions and cutting-edge technique for teaching life-changing work through movement class, workshops, seminars, individual sessions, and her pregnancy program. Holy moly, I'm exhausted. I I'm know, exhausted. I mean, I can, I, and I can continue, but let me just say that the reason why we're having Doreen on this podcast with us, because not only does she have that breadth of experience, but she also has been a caregiver for her mom and dad for over 10 years. Her dad recently passed, but she continues to caregive for her mother. Her mother was diagnosed with dementia about eight years ago, and she has been on hospice for the last two years. We are having Doreen share with us her story. Welcome, Doreen. Oh, thank you very, very much. I, Susie, you said you were exhausted. My God, I was exhausted. I am too. so exhausted, <laughs> and I feel so unaccomplished. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel inferior and I can't, I don't know, this is, you had, you didn't tell me all this. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm just, I'm God you bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I have, I have indeed been blessed. My mother is now currently living with my sister in Arizona and uh, my sister is now taking care of her for a while. Uh, I really needed a break because it is an exhausting experience to caregive for someone um, who has diminishing capacities. And I really immersed myself in as much data as I could find, as much um, information that I was able to uh, uncover. None of us are really educated on it until we have to be. I had a, quite a different opinion of what I thought Alzheimer's was and then like, you know, got hit with reality and I was like, oh, this is not what I expected, you know. So yeah. how was that for you when you when your mom began to exhibit signs of dementia? As I said, I, I started looking into as much uh, homework, so to speak, as I possibly could. And I found about good fats, meaning olive oil and uh, coconut oil or MCT oil, um, CBD and um, organic. I shifted there. My mom was a cracker freak. And um, Dr. David Perlmutter had a book. uh, His first was uh, Grain Brain. And the relationship with between not just diabetes, but dementia and then Alzheimer's with the overprocessed grains and what was beginning to be demonstrated. So I uh, immediately changed my parents' diet 
once they moved in with me to everything organic. Um, any kind of cracker or bread that she had or that daddy had too was um, gluten-free. And I just kept uh, doing that with the CBD. And I noted, well, um, let me just say that my parents lived in Covina. And when all this began to happen was when my mother's, uh, my mother's sister, one of my mother's sisters died. And mommy stopped eating and stopped drinking water. And my dad would call me and from, I live over by USC. And sometimes to get out to Covina, the longest time it took me was two hours and 20 minutes, which is a 30 minute ride. Right. So um, it was back and forth and it was really difficult. So after some years, I got them to move uh, to a condo near me. And that was only an, a year, a little bit, little bit more than a year and a half. And in that time, it was really, I was back and forth all the time. And it, that unto itself was getting incredibly exhausting. And I could not, if I did not make their food, I could not be reassured that they would have anything healthful. Uh, they like to eat TV dinners and that has zero nutritional mm -hmm. value. And they like to eat you know, my mother's favorite cracker was Cheez-Its, zero nutritional value. Right. If I could get some cheese on it and give her some apple, and there was an improvement. And that's what was very encouraging to me, not just encouraging, but also discouraging. Because with them living on their own, I could not guarantee that they were going to eat that way. And it seemed like the older they got, the worse their eating habits became. Because it was easy. It was quick. It was, they didn't yes. have to think about yeah. it. Yeah. My mom used to, and stepdad used to sit and watch TV and had like this candy dish next to them. And yeah. with the, you know, yeah. Snickers and, Ma and Mars and it, whatever else, those little, the little, you know, individuals. Yes. We all, yes. We all know that all you need is a good Snickers and Mars bar and you're fine. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Come, Come on. My mom was up? like, I'd rather eat the sugar. I'd rather have this than dinner. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that becomes that becomes the war. Uh, there were so many times when I, I well, you asked me about did I see an improvement? Yes. yes. And the, the, the CBD capsules um, that I was giving them that made a very big difference. And, Can you say what CBD uh, is? Because not I know most people know what it is, but so there's well, a CBD, lot of different types of CBD. So can you talk about that, Doreen? Because you've done so much research in this area, I know. Well, the CBD I'm, I'm talking about is in particular that I was using with them is um, Dr. Hyla Cass, and she is a psychiatrist who only works with people who are willing to get off the pharmaceutical drugs and onto uh, CBD. And what CBD is, it is the medicinal quality of the cannabis plant. So there's no THC, which means that there's no psychotropic effect. And what it does is it uh, reduces inflammation it works on the nervous system and it it works on appetite it also helps with memory and I can say that because of what I was witnessing with my mother and my father now when my I moved my parents from the condo after a year and a half to an assisted living and they were only there for two months because the tumble down effect was horrifying can you explain what that means, the tumble-down effect? Well, the tumble-down effect is what I noted when my parents, or my mother in particular, was not getting enough water, and dehydration is really one of the primary factors in, uh, in what causes death. And in the two months that my mother was there, she became aggressive mm. and difficult mm -hmm. um she became um in a, she would scream at my dad now my dad he had uh, a, a quintuple bypass and um he had a heart condition and so when he would scream when mommy would scream and go after him and nobody was there i didn't know about it and i didn't realize how traumatizing that was for my father until my niece told me that she was getting calls in Michigan and she could hear was grandma screaming at daddy what a worthless person he was. Now, this is completely out of uh, character for my mother, except if she's really distressed. 
which what that's what I was noting is that her level of distress was becoming stronger and what begins to grow in the gut travels to the brain and it's like a mold and the mold affects the brain's capacity to discern as well as memory and so my what I was watching my mother do was act out all the unaddressed feelings she had with my father that she had you know, heretofore said, you know, we forgive and we forget. And apparently cellular memory doesn't know about that because my mom did not forget. And at every possible turn, what was happening was she was attacking my father more and more verbally. Time for a commercial. Oh, yeah, let's do that first. Thank you, Cassie, for keeping us on track here. <laughs> well, we want, to, we want to pay tribute to our sponsors. So absolutely. You, you, absolutely. And Susie, hold that thought. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> As COVID-19 continues to spread throughout the country, we've all had to rethink the way we do many things, including shopping for groceries. And in an effort to stay isolated, many of us are taking advantage of grocery delivery services, including me. During this quarantine here in Los Angeles, I've been using Instacart. And let me tell you, these Instacart shoppers are braving stores for those of us who are either sick or have someone vulnerable in the family, and they are nothing less than household heroes. So if you want to try Instacart for a free delivery on your first order over $35 and to start your 14-day free trial, follow the link in the show notes to Instacart so they know that we sent you. And please, stay home and stay safe. And now, back to Love Conquers Alls. You're listening to Love Conquers Alls, and we're talking to Doreen Rivera. And we were just speaking about uh, the tumble down effect. And it's so hard on us as caregivers who aren't the primary caregiver anymore to watch that happen and and to control it. Wait, let's let's backtrack. There's so much to talk about with you. And I want to make sure everyone understands that you have the body full mind process. Can you just explain what that okay. means? The bodyful mind is a process uh, of movement and breath technique that allows the individual, the breathing is what allows the person to access the unconscious. And what's stored in the cells of our body is every life experience from the beginning all the way to present moment. And we have responses or we have reactions, right? Right there's the law of physics to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so that goes on in the body like it goes on anywhere and the emotional patterns that we leave unevolved and unaddressed um, don't go anywhere they fester underneath the, the levels of consciousness so what happens in class is that people start to do movements and exercise and they don't realize uh that their left shoulder is higher than their right, or both shoulders are higher. And both shoulders are higher. You've heard the expression, um, the weight of the world on their shoulders, which is being responsible to people outside yourself versus being anchored in the heart, being responsible to yourself first, so that you are capable of being response able to others. That's kind of a a, a constant thread that you hear all the time, you know, in, in terms of whether you're a parent, whether you're a caregiver, it's, it's take your oxygen first. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's pretty hard to give somebody oxygen if you're dead. Right. So. Right. If you, exactly. <laughs> but, we, but that's but. the point of the car. Nobody would think to put maple syrup where the oil belongs. Oh, shoot. We but can't we even have maple syrup ourselves. anymore either. Ah. No, I'm saying in the car, it okay. wouldn't run. But, you know, <laughs> thing, these things, every once in a while, the body can assimilate. It's what happens when that's all we are drawn to. Right. When you've only got a few minutes and you're having a sandwich and then you have a piece of fruit and then you have some juice and then you have a smoothie. And the amount of sugar that is in that takes the body over what is capable of utilizing. Okay. So there's, it's always about finding that balance. Can we talk about pH balance as well? Like acidity, acidic and uh, alkaline, because I know that plays a, a role as well, right? Yeah. It, anything that you do too much of is going to have an effect. Now, you know, first of all, there has to be a, 
uh, a baseline, what you understand your healthful condition is. Now, um, my parents were always, uh, every weekend, there was dancing going on, celebrating going on. I mean, if you stub your toe, we had a party. It didn't matter. (laughs) Uh, And the thing about that is that they were drinking. And when people drink, they don't eat. So we're talking about this being this is being established in them many, many, many years ago. And I would tell them, you're really lucky you grew up in a time where you were eating organic food. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't need organic. I said, yes, you did. Everything was organic. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to say it was organic because everything was grown healthfully that in those days. Uh, But now, um, you know, the soil isn't allowed to be rotated. The crops aren't allowed to be rotated, which depletes the soil, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. So we aren't, we don't have, we plant food in the ground, but there's no nutrients in the soil. And often there's, uh, there's poisons in the soil. So, and, and yes, so, we're so instead ingesting, of nutrients, we're ingesting we, poison. but you see how, how perfect is that Susie? Because we're growing our food in poison. And so we poise, we learn to poison ourselves. Oh, a hundred percent. And know, then that, can, can we yeah. go back to one thing that you said that's very systemic in that is like, then what does our cellular memory remember in our bodies and what do we carry oh, with us? Cause that's what your bodiful mind is, yeah. is sharing with us. Right. Yes. And you know, the thing is that one of the primary things is nutrients, nutrition. We are fed without even thinking about it, of course, when we're intrauteral, then we come out and we have to scream for it. And if we're lucky enough, our mothers breastfed us. If we're not so fortunate, they gave us formula. Now formula sets up uh, a microsystem in the intestine from the very beginning that is based in sugar. Mm. If you, you look at all, oh. so sugar then becomes part of how we seek nurturance the need yes the need to be nurtured and it be, the sugar becomes connected to our primary caregivers so when we're looking to um, satiate ourselves or we're looking to make ourselves quote unquote feel better uh, you'll go for something sweet we all want to be nurtured i still do yes yes and it's the manner of nurturance that is the key we have learned everything upside down Mm. you know if we were given carrots if we were my daughters used to love raw carrots and raw celery and my youngest loved raw potato I don't know how that happened but she did and they would eat that and they would stick it in almond butter and they quite naturally were drawn to that. My kids did not eat sugar until they were getting into school or we were going to parties and neither one of them really liked birthday cake. It was just like it, uh, the faces they would make. But after a while conditioning themselves because everybody else is doing it, mm-hmm. it becomes part of uh, our social construct and how we socialize. Right is to be in self-destructive behavior. But I think your your metaphor your your example with breast milk and I'm which is very in, forefront in my mind right now not because I'm nursing but my daughter is nursing our uh, our 5 week old baby and congratulations thank you. And so you know and we're and she was premature so we've been dealing with this sort of like a uh, weight gain uh catch up and yeah. she's been in the hospital. We had to we had to succumb to half breastfeeding, half tube feeding to get her back up, off the plateau. And you know, so so I was I was able to get a better look at what breast milk is made of because they test the breast milk to make sure what the caloric my dog just barked yes. what the caloric amount is you know, and what, and what the balance between fats and sugars and everything. And so it's, it's so nicely balanced breast milk and it's the greatest food. Yeah. (laughs) And it's, and it's sweet. It does have sugar. It does have fats, but it has it in a balance that, that makes sense. Like, you know, we, we quite natural. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's not what we eat. It's how we eat it. That's true. Yeah. When I'm working with young mothers, I always have them drink coconut milk because it has 
all the fats and it will it it really does make a difference with your milk oh interesting i want to um hold that thought for a second we're going to take a quick break um, okay you're listening to love conquers all this is don priest beloved producer of love conquers alls hey if you've been thinking about starting your own podcast stop thinking and do it Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more within minutes of finishing your first recording. Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. So join Love Conquers Alls and over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. And now, back to Love Conquers Alls. We are back. You're listening to Love Conquers All with Doreen Rivera. You know, one of the things that was the most difficult was when, you know, the dynamics between mother and child become exacerbated when a parent has dementia. And any and all of the unmet emotional expressions and experiences come out. Um, I remember my mother years ago telling me that she was jealous of my relationship with my father. Well, that came into play while she was here with my dad. Um, That came into play. And she became very, very agitated if I would step in to assist my father. Towards the end of my dad's life, he was having a lot more heart pain, chest pains. And uh, she would get very aggressive with me and with him. And at one point, I, I looked at her and I said, Mom, you may not speak to me like that anymore. And it was something that I had wanted to say to her since I was a kid. And she just looked at me and she said, well, I'll speak to you any way that I like. And I said, well, then I will come back when my mother returns. And I walked out of the room because I knew that at that moment, what I was feeling was all of the anger at the injustice at the way I was treated as a child in certain circumstances. And those feelings come into play. They don't go anywhere. And I am grateful that I have whatever tools I have, though there's a lot of people that don't have any. Wow, that's huge. Um, That's huge because I... I don't know if you've seen my film, but my mom, my mom and the girl, and it, and I show that that side of my mother, where when she lived with me, she for a year, and 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 sometimes she would just say, you know, would like she'd be having an agitation in a moment, and she'd say, you know, well, you're a whore. Why don't you go back out on the street where you belong? And be what? Where is that coming from? You know. And then yeah. I would tell her later, you can't talk to me like that, and she would say, what? I would never say that. In a, and she would cry because yes. she wasn't, she didn't yes. realize that she had like these filters and maybe these un, you know, subconscious yes. like feelings of whatever it was from the past or pr- whatever, you know, all those little yes. things that imprint yes. that, that your, yes. that your cognitive mind goes, oh, that's just silly that's bullshit. Right. Yeah. No, it's not. My mother was one of six. She only wanted time with my grandmother. That's all she ever wanted. Well, when I was born, my grandmother became, she was my spiritual guide. She was the one I bonded with because my mother had this virus that she had on her spine and on her hands. So when I was born, I had some of it on my hands and they said, you can't touch her. So the one that I bonded with was my grandmother and my mother was incensed by that. Sure. And she, that's all she wanted. And I remember my mo- my grandmother took care of me until I was two. And I remember when my, my grandmother said to my mother, I want you to leave Doreen with me because she and daddy were going to look for an apartment. This is back in New York after the after World War II. And uh, my my mom said, she said to my father that night, she said, and she told me this, she said, Lou, we have to find an apartment. My mother wants to keep Doreen. So the feelings that my mom had about me and my grandmother and the fact that my grandmother was caring for me and that there wasn't <laughs> that that's what she wanted she only wanted to be with her mother and the things that my mom would say to me it would be it was like being slapped back into this time frame where i was little and she was angry with me for 
something I did not comprehend. Wow. Something you had no control over. And that's, that's, that's where being a caregiver, where you have to step up so big <clears throat> and lean into the place where they're at at the moment, you have to become so resilient. And yes. because, because at this point, trying to process that on, on a level where your mom and you, where our mothers and, our, and ourselves, it can't, we, we passed that, that ship sailed. So we can, o- we can only be the, re- the recipient of those raw emotions and we need to process them and realize where they're coming from, that they're, they're no longer veiled, there's no more filter, you know, and, right. and, but, and, and we have to figure out how to process that and, and re- receive it in the way that m- makes us feel okay, not damaged. And, you know, and, and I think what you said to your, that's easier, that's easier, oh, said, well than easier done. said than done. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think for me, my mother always balanced it with like my, my, I know my mom adores me and always has. So whatever, whatever frustrations that would come out, you know, in a horrible way, yeah, I felt secure that my mom loved me through and through. So I, 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 I looked away. And so I, I knew that I, but it took a while. Don't get me wrong. And I'm sure people listening right now are saying, oh my God, my mom. Yeah, my mom. You know, that's, that's the thing. You know, you're talking about something that is, you know, a, a cellular memory happens in one one hundredth of a second. So unless you've really taught yourself how to be completely numb to life, that is something that is going to tap into the cellular relationship to what that vibrational quality is. So I, I, I had so many conversations with the, the um, nurses who would come and, uh, you know, just say things to me like, um, you get so frustrated, but I don't see, you know, you, I don't see you lash out at your mother. But that was because I was able to stretch. I was able to do my breath, deep breathing. I was able to journal all of the experiences that my mother was tapping into. If I ignored it, it would only escalate because I know other people where that has happened, where it becomes the impossible task to take care of the parent because there's just so much emotional fire. And what you've done for yourself in caregiving for the last 10 years you've been taking care of yourself in this way. And this has been the process that you're sharing with other people. Yes. Yes. But you know, this process is just a way of living life. It isn't anything particular to dementia or Alzheimer's though. I remember, um, I remember looking at my mother and seeing in her eyes, a sense of displacement. And I just, it was a moment where, realizing that the mother that I adore and that adores me is present though what's railing about is all of the pain all of the fear all of the disturbances that were never addressed that were never spoken by her oh that's beautiful that's that's it that's that's such a great perspective I love that you know what's uh, it's really important that people learn how to breathe in a way that allows them to access the sense of calm within the sense of knowing within Mm -hmm. because to face someone you love and adore and who you know loves you sometimes people don't know that their parents really love them that's right and I see that all the time and there's there's uh, the relationship is built on contempt that is a very very difficult thing and I know that uh, my mother when she was in the uh, assisted living, she said to the nurse, you see this one here? She's not going to be happy until she sees me hanging dead from a rope. And I, I looked, I thought, wow. And what's really interesting about that, and I'll leave you on this, is that when I was born, the cord was wrapped three times around my neck and I shot out and the doctor barely caught me. Oh my God. Yeah. So that metaphor is incredible. You got it. I got it. I got it. And yeah, I I have to say this. My mother would always tell me because my brother, who was older than me, was born with the vocal cord wrapped around his neck. And and she had the most horrible 
delivery, you know, back in the day. And she didn't want another baby, but my father insisted and promised a girl. So, and you know, <laughs> and, he delivered. and he delivered. And so my mother always said, I, when the doctor said, you're ready to push, let's go. She said, what? I don't feel anything. She said, I was such a lady. And so I think she's always been so, like, I think that, that imprint of birthing me was so, yes, it's so was so lovely to her. I, I was yes. like, I was kind and nice, she said. Yes, that is a very important point, the birth imprint. It's really a very important establishing relationship. I think so. Will you come back and talk again? Yes. Absolutely. Will you? Because we didn't get enough of you. <laughs> exactly. I know there's so much more to share with you. you Indeed, Susie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Doreen. This was thank wonderful. You. What you shared with us is personal and powerful. Thank you very, very much. It's what connects us all. And that's really crucial. We're so glad yeah. that you connected us and that you shared with us. And of course, we thank you, our listeners. We hope that you liked our show. And if you did, please subscribe and share the podcast with others who are also dealing with Alzheimer's. Remember, love is contagious, love is powerful, and love conquers all. All you gotta do is sing a song. All you gotta do is sing a song. Mm-hmm.